All right. We are back with our Monkathon All Monk Adventure, the Day of 10,000 Fists. And our party is entering uh, into the final arc. Uh, we've been following them since they were, uh, for the most part, uh, in their teens, when they were young uh, warriors called by the Day of 10,000 Fists, this huge extra dimensional portal uh, out here on this plane. Uh, we have seen them grow. We have seen them set off uh, to work out their own personal ambitions. And along the way, we've seen them make allies, find new resources, gain new abilities, and also make enemies. And now, at last, their greatest, most dangerous, most cruel and cunning enemy is waiting for them. They have survived their third round of the Day of 10,000 Fists, uh, but they have emerged not to the celebrating crowds in the Ten Year City, but instead to the assembled forces of the Demon Way, a group of cultists centered around gaining absolute power regardless of the cost. And here you have the foremost figure of the cult, the White Heavenly Demon, arrayed with some of his Black Flame generals, uh, his own children. Uh, how many of whom you've killed now? Four? Uh, three? We were on, there's seven of them. Yeah. And we were trying to kill three because we were skipping four. So I killed three of them. All right. So you've killed three of his successors. And now he has showed up with uh, the uh, three of the remaining successors. Each of them a powerful general in their own right and also a massive horde of low-level cultists whoops forgot some cultists but wait there's more Sorry, I thought they deserved to be a little more differentiated. So, all of these forces of the demon cult arrayed outside of the gate. You can also see something, something is wrong. You can feel it like a distortion in the air. No one else has emerged from the Day of 10,000 Fists yet. You can feel a sort of pressure in the air. And the pressure seems to be emanating from the white-haired gentleman standing in front of you. Uh, he's wearing white robes. They're not too ostentatious, but they're definitely of sort of fine quality. They're gleaming white. He removes a hat, uh, a similar bleached shade with a white veil hanging from it revealing a smiling face that is surprisingly young. He looks like he's not much older than you all, even though you all know that he has to be decades, if not even centuries old. And he smiles mm -hmm. and he says, well, I've been waiting for you all. What do you all want to do? <clears throat> uh, clearly, it's my turn. I go, well, uh, hey, Dad, I've been, you know, busy uh, staking a claim to uh, the demon uh, cult and just, you know, having fun, making, my, making a name for myself, becoming a uh, figure, a household name just like yours. Not hiding out in remote areas, just hiding, looking at the other three princes, calling them out, because I'm kind of a dick. He laughs when you call him dad. Um, and you notice that when you, when you talk about taking out the others, it's actually the other... Oh, haha. <laughs> 
Good catch. Uh, Joe? Ha <laughs> ha, there we go. I was going to question that, but uh, I really didn't want yep. to. Yep. Helps if we're this on is... the right map. There we go. Okay. Whoa. There's people everywhere. I feel like it should give you a little notification at the top that says, players not on same map. <laughs> it would be nice. Yeah, so you see the forces arrayed. Uh, contrary to what I can do with my map making software, uh, the tenure city is fully on fire. Uh, most of the like tents and booths have already burned up. Um, you can see uh, signs of chaos, like food market. Uh, food stall market foods are just discarded and trampled in the street. Not the uh, food. <laughs> banners Not have been torn down. Uh, people just fled. Uh, you don't see a ton of bodies. It seems your guess would be that people were sort of given time to flee in terror. Uh, whether that was mercy or or hubris is hard to say. But, yeah, the city is mostly destroyed. You see a few bodies, and they look like they belong to powerful fighters of different clans. And the white heavenly demon is standing. Well, let's see how far away he is. He's standing about 35 feet away. Out of curiosity, does anyone have the discernment technique active? Looks like Lilifear's got it. Thought I did. Show everyone. Yes, has I do. It. Uh, I just don't know if you all. Looks like uh, everyone has it up except for uh, Ty. Ah. Uh, everyone else, give me a wisdom. Everyone except Ty, give me a wisdom saving throw. Great start. <clears throat> oh, wow. Well, these guys are consistent. Yep. <laughs> oh, wait. Harry, why'd you roll twice? I oh. didn't. Well, one's an old wisdom saving throw I threw earlier. Yeah, that was that way. When I got confused, I've seen how um, the night was going to go, so I rolled a for wisdom. Oh, <laughs> makes sense. He was trying to predict the future. Man, for a pack of monks, that's uh, not a great wisdom save. <laughs> so, well, we're getting about ten at least. <laughs> Uh, so all of you can feel it as Ty talks about, I mean, essentially, even though he's talking about it very flippantly, uh, talks about killing the other black flame princes, uh, which a reminder for folks who are just joining us, uh, a title that he has stolen by killing one of them, <laughs> um, the other black flame wielders bristle at that and you can feel a powerful pressure from them and you can tell they're somewhat stronger than you but not not absurd uh the heavenly demon registers as nothing he registers like someone who has no magical spiritual or martial power uh and then he laughs and when he laughs he gently for just a second lifts back the veil concealing his power and uh show you sort of weather it uh letting it sort of race around you the other three you're not quite run away frightened but you suddenly have the impression of almost like a jumble of overwhelming images. It's like looking up at an infinitely tall mountain. 
just the sense of something ancient and massive looming over you. It's the feeling of a child in the woods realizing there's a tiger behind them. Mm. All of these little moments of threat and violence and fear and uncertainty that you felt up to this point pales in comparison. This guy radiates like the sun. It's more than any of you all have seen coming from anyone ever. I turn around and walk back through the portal. <laughs> it's like, I'm going to go back over. It does not accept you. Portal rejects. Um, <laughs> and he just smiles and says, If you turn out to be more worthwhile than they were, then I will consider it an investment of sorts in you. But I thought it was time we met before one of the others killed you. And he gestures to the the three behind him. And he recognized from their description... um, There we go. Uh, you recognize you recognize them from their descriptions, uh, including. It looks like this is two, three, and four. You killed uh, seven. Yeah, you killed seven, six, and five. You were not able to take out three, uh, and three is one of the ones who is staring daggers at you. The most powerful black flame prince is not here. But the heavenly demon laughs and says, Genetics are not much concern to me, nor bloodline. Everybody give me an intelligence check real quick. I roll a zero. <laughs> Like intelligence oh, based no. saving through. Just in, just intelligence. <laughs> Not the worst. So that's every little fear. What'd you get? What? Uh, intelligence check. Oh, yep. No intelligence check. Not saving just check. Skills. Oh. <laughs> something terrible uh it goes right past uh let's see it goes right past show show the that silence tracks. lilifier uh snicked something about it makes you like cock your head tie Wait, Ty, you rolled a constitution check. Is it the same? How? I hit intelligence. Oh, they're the same. It's all right. Um, Oh, she didn't. But Ty, you just want to cock your head for a second. What what is genetics? (laughs) Like, you don't know this word that he used. Um, He says, genetics, bloodlines, descendants. These things ultimately don't matter. Do you know how many Black Flame Princes there have been? <laughs> he turns around and laughs and, and looks at the three behind him. And it's such a dismissive thing. And they just kind of take it. <laughs> um, you can feel the gap between them. Even if every Black Flame Prince attacked the Heavenly Demon together, they wouldn't leave a scratch. And he says, I'm interested in more. And when he says more, his eyes flare for a second. And you can see a hunger there. When he says more, he's not just talking about stuff or people or territory. 
there is a true a truly a fire of madness down in him a hunger for something that single-handedly brought this entire organization and all of its power into being and whatever it is he still hasn't gotten there yet he says Ty is it I suppose yeah, yes. you're what number five now uh, correct number five you could be useful to me. I need enterprising spirits who push at the edges of what is. But that's only as long as you are more useful alive than dead and out of my way. And he takes a step forward. And with each step, you feel like a pulse run through the ground. And I think you're the sort who might lie to my face to survive today. I think you need a demonstration. And he smiles. And I'm going to need everyone to roll for initiative. <laughs> While we're doing that... Please um, be good. Please be is good. the school I started also on fire? And do I, if so, do I see any? Th there's no indication that any of my students were dead, right? Uh, here's an interesting question: Would you have left a plan in place for what they would do if, if an overwhelming power uh, came into this area or tried to attack them? I want to say yes, but not from the outside. I would have been focused on things coming from the portal. I don't think there would have been a plan for people from this world attacking, if that makes any sense. So I'll leave it to you. What would they have tried to do? What have you been training them to do? It depends on how these people approached, but the, given the fact that the place is on fire, I like to think that my students would have tried to help evacuate, and some of them may have even tried to fight uh, to protect the this place. This, yeah. In that case, give me a perception check. with a 14 um, you're not just you're not just looking with your eyes you experience a moment of dislocation um, your spiritual senses extend out away from you and very specifically, they seem to go down into the ground like roots. And you feel them sort of running out into the world around you. It seems like... Roll... Roll 1d4 for me.
a two. All right. So you instantly grasp. You've brought in some instructors, right? Yeah, as the school grew, if I didn't bring instructors in, I at least would have promoted... Uh, I, I wouldn't be able to teach everyone. So it would be sort of common practice to have a plan for this. Like, clans, families, sects, they get attacked like this fairly regularly, to be honest. Uh, bandits and rivals and demon cult and blood cult and all these groups it's something Stop that it. everyone would be sort of prepared for to an extent and i think that some of your, your elders would have brought that same attitude um okay good good yeah you you sense what seems to be the majority of them uh a good distance away like several miles away at this point uh, some of them are injured. Uh, the injured are mostly the elders. You get the impression that they probably sort of held people off. You also get the impression, though, this could have been more of a massacre than it was. Um, you can actually feel uh, two, of the, two of the students are pretty badly injured, but that's it of the students. All right. Into initiative. The red flames uh, are going to go first. I'm assuming we're still not healed either. You are not. <laughs> this is going to be bad. Uh, the red <laughs> flames uh, don't move. Uh, the silence, you're up. This doesn't look like fun. So we have a guy that's almost a god there. He wants to teach us a lesson. What I heard is he wants to teach Ty a lesson. True, a demonstration. So what's the move? All right, so here we go. For a step over, a step over this way, right? We give us some distance. Split us up so you can't do like a big old AOE attack. We're ready in action for the first enemy to come within twenty feet of me. I'm gonna hit it with a dart. All right. Ty, you're up. Oh, man. What does Ty do? Oh no, we don't have a gun the uh huh. I'm going to spend my action on quick heal. That way maybe I can get some uh HP back. Alright. 
So you have quickened healing. You might just double check whether your uh, reversion technique is more powerful. Gotcha. Uh... Oh yeah, you definitely want to do reversion instead. <laughs> we're going to see my techniques at because I have no idea where it's at. Uh, it's at the bottom of your inventory. Gotcha. Uh, so as an action, um, you can spend hit dice as if you had completed a short rest. So that's up to half your hit dice. Your level uh, 11, that's going to be 5d8 plus 5. 5d8 5 plus 5, oh my. I think roll 20 has better dice roller. <laughs> Easier to use or luckier? <laughs> IBA plus plus five. Let's do this. 25, baby. Nice. Versus... Nice. So that was your action. So you still have your move and bonus action. All right. Oh, uh, how do we move? Oh, we will. We're going to move partially behind the rock for cover from half of the field. Then maybe. And then for bonus action dodge if I'm I'm very nervous apparently. <laughs> I was not I'm not happy to be fighting this. So the Heavenly Demon has been totally uninterested in what you have done in the last like 15 seconds up until you hide behind the pillar. Uh, and he yeah, fires. You know what? Uh, and he's going to use oh, a legendary sh- action and he is going <laughs> to teleport right behind you. <laughs> and he whispers into your ear, the Heavenly Demon does not Retreat. <laughs> and it is Sho's turn. At least you took the dodge action. And Sho, you are starting your turn within 30 feet of the Heavenly Demon. So you need to make a constitution saving throw against his annihilating aura. A 20 isn't going to do it. The, the number two zero <laughs> is not good enough? Is not good enough. I, yeah, I don't think this is going to go well for us, fellas. We're all going to die. You take 20 <laughs> points of necrotic damage as oh just from being within, just from being this close to the heavenly demon, white flame it's almost like there are sparks of it hanging in the air uh and more of it is accumulating it's almost like snow if snow didn't fall but instead just sort of like sparked into being and hung in the air and more and more of it like frames you and then you just catch like a torch All right, show. It's your turn. It's really not good for someone made of wood. Um,
Um, I don't know. <laughs> I will. Actually, I do know. I do know what I'm going to do. Um, All right, I'm going to take a few steps forward. Yeah, right about here, I think. And I'm going to cast Entangle on all those people down there. And that's a 20 foot square. Um, oh, is that a square? I thought that was the distance I could cast it. Maybe I can back up a little. Oh, yeah, I can back up a little. I didn't have to move. I thought you were getting out of the annihilating aura. <laughs> yeah, but I can. I, I don't have to be that close to those people. Uh, so I will tell you, you can't catch all three of the black flames uh, at the same time. You can get all three of them in 20 feet? 20 feet is four squares. Yeah. I guess that's true. You could put it in the middle. Yeah. It'd be on the edge, I guess. I don't know. I love if- it. Could even catch the three guys behind him, I guess. But yeah, yeah, that's. I was kind of. <laughs> I was kind of hoping to do this. If you can see my arrow, if not, I can draw a shape. Yeah, that's probably fine. Okay. Oh, yeah, I guess that means, like, saving throws. Actually, here's what I'll tell you. They don't even move. Like, they don't they don't try and dodge it. Fine. Um, I just want to ensure that they, like... <laughs> I don't, problem. We, we've got enough the plan problems is here. with this one guy. I don't want them Stepping deciding in, they can join in. <laughs> Uh, just for uh, fun, give me an insight check. The main guy probably like, would kill him if they stepped in, but I think even with a ten, yeah, you know, like it's weird that they didn't try and get out of the way. There's something going on. <laughs> okay, you um, don't have any like profound insight about it, but you at least yeah. you know, yeah. So- Something's funky. Um, so that's my action. About half my movement. I guess as a bonus action, can I use Shillelagh since it's a cantrip? Uh, yeah. Okay, I'll go on and just get Shillelagh activated. That'll that'll end my turn. I think I'm 30 feet away. (laughs) Well, 35 feet, really. I was about to say, it'd be worth checking to be sure. (laughs) Yeah, I'm 35 feet away. All right. <laughs> Lilifear, you're up. 
Okay. So what was the thing again? I could heal myself, but instead of using key, just use my hit die somehow? Uh, that was something that Ty can do. Oh, okay. Also, you're within 30 feet of the Annihilation Aura. Oh, yep, I have to do that first. Okay. So give me Come. a constitution saving throw. Mm -hmm. Oof. Yeah. Oof. Lilifear takes 20 points of necrotic damage uh, as these white sparks accumulate and plummets to the ground. And as Lilifear smolders, you see something more than the physical burning. Uh, man, why? Why is it always you? Um, <laughs> I like to die a lot. Everyone know. except Lilifear, give me a perception check. Even gave you that amulet, amulet to try and help you not die as much. Yeah, I was just thinking, I was like, it's nice that I have that amulet, but... Right, last fight, I guess I didn't have any health left. <laughs> oh, don't worry. I'm at 11 HP, so, you know, I'm, I'm right there with you. Yeah, and then the end. Oh, uh, so everyone except for Ty notices Lilifear is not unconscious. Lilifear is dead. Oh. Saving throws or anything? Womp womp. <laughs> no death save. All right. Uh, Snicked, it is your oh, turn. Man. Uh, you get to start off with the Constitution saving throw. I think Snicked is also dead. When you were saying that, you know, we would be able to buy all this stuff with our gold, <laughs> you were just saying that, you know, to throw us off. You give us false hope. It's like, yeah, I've gotten bored with monks. We're uh, <laughs> we're going to do, I don't know, uh, post-apocalyptic Mad Max. And I just wanted to, you know, get it over with. <laughs> Rocks fall, everybody dies. Oh, uh, enough. Snicked. Oof. Oop. Yeah. Let's see how you do. Right. <laughs> Suddenly, it's opposite day. If you fail a saving throw, you survive. Snick, you take exactly 17 points of damage. I am at zero. <laughs> what does your Phoenix style do for you at this point? By the text, you have advantage on death saving throws. Oh, no. When you become stable, you regain hit points. Oh. Huh. So no coming back from the dead. And that's the highest level of Phoenix style? Yeah. I just have to refresh to look at it. Yeah. All right. Yeah. If I if I were able to stabilize, I would be able to yeah do stuff. <laughs> well, there goes what my plan for the turn was going to be, which was. <laughs> 240 feet away. It was run away anyways. <laughs> activate the boots of speed, activate tiger style, and run. <laughs> Go fast. Um, yeah. Uh, it's the white heavenly demon's turn. Uh, he's going to use the black fl or the the white flame palm. 
Whoa. <laughs> Only gets a 15 on the first roll. Oh. <laughs> Second roll is going to get a crit. Second roll is a 26. Mm. Uh, you got me. You do? You do you have key points action? left? Oh, yeah, you did take the dodge action. I did. One more roll. <laughs> 19. Ah, uh, I have 19. Still hits. <laughs> uh, now, you do have... Uh, I have key. You have been the current, so you can make him re-roll it. I, I am. All right, he's going to re-roll. I'm going to say he re-rolls with disadvantage. Seventeen. Oh, he misses. Uh, and since you caused him to miss, you can make an attack against him. <laughs> Might as well. There is no point in not trying to attack him. Uh, uh, let me. All right. <laughs> Twenty-three. Uh, 23 hits. Oh. Yeah, take that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> take that. Give him a bloody nose. He just... <laughs> you get the impression that he could stop it, and he doesn't. He just looks at you. <laughs> he says, is that it? <sighs> he sighs. I was going to say there's more to come. He thinks I was hiding. I'm really just trying to go for theatrics here. And I was jumping off the rock on this guy. I was going after the other three. Uh, he's just going to walk away from you. <laughs> Uh-oh. He's going to go back here. Uh, do you want to make... Oh, no, you just used your reaction. Yeah. He's going to walk out to about here. Uh, and after... One of the cultists turns, and they're not doing anything. Uh, he just yells. Well, he doesn't even yell. He just speaks the word enough. But he speaks it with a spiritual pressure that is crushing. Uh, everyone who is still alive, give me a constitution saving throw. Everybody dies. Uh, all of you are stunned. And you see, even, uh, even the cultists, let's see how far they are. the like closest cultists who are just barely at the edge of it. They're also stunned. He like didn't pull this punch for anyone. Everyone is sort of frozen by the weight of this, which is why it's very odd that you see those of you who are alive looking past the cultists. You see the dirtiest looking old man you've ever seen sort of hobbling forward. He's kind of like weaving a little, like he might be drunk. And as he goes past, you see some of the red masks try and like put a hand on him. And it's like he stumbles at just the right second. And he walks out and says, uh, well, what's, who's yelling? And the heavily demon looks at him and is just baffled. This is the first time you've seen him seem to like miss a beat. And he just calmly, like, with a little bit of confusion, 
but he just sort of calmly, without a lot of aggressive motion, raises a hand, palm out, and all of those motes of, of white sparks in the air like suck inward and form an, a replica of his hand, of his open palm that is like larger than a person. And this flaming white open palm pushes out towards this person. And uh, the living, give me a perception check. Uh, show and Ty catch this. So this huge palm is is pushing out at him. And all you catch is like a flicker of red light and an impression of something moving. And he's just like stumbled a few feet forward and the palm flies past him and eradicates like five of the the red flames as it just pushes it just keeps going out to the horizon and just burns through a bunch of them before it like in the distance you see like part of the forest catch on fire um and this this stranger says whoa that was pretty close if you kept trying that, you might actually accomplish something. Now the heavenly demon is starting to get mad. <laughs> he brings his hands together and pushes both palms forward, one over the other. And it doesn't even look like a palm now. It's like a... It's like the face of a horrific demon made of white fire. And it flies at him. And this time, the three of you catch it. There's a flash of black and the white fire like washes around something. Uh, show you feel it. It like this, whatever he uses to stop this shunts it far enough to the side that it protects you as well. And he says, well, that's enough of that. And you all see the white painted silhouette of a tiger that is 30 feet tall. And you've seen these silhouettes from Snicked before, but this one is different. His have looked like brush strokes of, like faint brush strokes in the air, sort of intangible. Within the depths of this silhouette, you see galaxies. You see swirling cosmos and stars and suns. And there's a feeling of vertigo. Like you're being pulled into it for a second. And then this giant spectral tiger moves at the same time as this fighter. And he just smacks the heavenly demon. And the heavenly demon goes flying off into the distance. And he says, well, okay, that's enough of that. Need to move. And the tiger vanishes. And now it's the red silhouette of a massive phoenix. A red bird equally as large sort of flying above. And he flickers. And it's almost like being gently tapped on the forehead. But each of you feels a, the living. Each of you feels a rush of fiery energy. You can move again. Uh, you feel some of your wounds heal. And he steps over. And it's like he grabs something out of the air above Snicked and Lilifear. And just jams it back into them. And both of you... <laughs> and are alive again. Snicked, give me a history check. Oh, 
better than expected. You vaguely recall being a child, an old man buying some of the weirdest, grossest stuff to humans at your food stall. Mm. And you were so proud to help hand him what's what's the most wild thing that your your family's food stall sells? That would be the snail jelly. Uh, how do you serve snail jelly? In the shell. So you hand it to this this looming smelly figure. And he laughs and throws it back with every sign of delight. And it's later that day that you wake up from a strange dream with a, like, dirty, beaten journal that taught you the first, uh, the first styles of your master of many styles. And he says... His, his demeanor changes. It's still the same voice, but it's more focused. And he says, I think that's as much as I can do. You need to go now. It was an instinct in the first place. It works for me. All right, guys, it's been fun. See you in 10 years. <laughs> Are you all going to scatter or run off together? I don't know yet. Should we stay together or like scatter? I don't know. Well, um, it's almost a roll of dice. I want to all follow scatter, this guy. Even we go together. I want to uh, follow this guy. Can we, can we go with him? Yeah. Where's he going? Wait, where did he go? Oh, he's right there. Yeah. Can we go with him? I also just want to steal this token for a second because I thought it turned out really cool. I would <laughs> I would even like plead my case, like, hey, we need to learn how to do what you just did. Please teach us. Or or teach me anyway. Please. I might be able to help a little. And two things happen here one everyone who has discernment sort of loaded um you get the same sort of crack in his veil as you did with the heavenly demon as he uses some ability if the heavenly demon was a mountain that stretched up to the sky this guy's aura is the sky beyond it's the stars it's the sun it's it's the heavens above the mountain. And you have uh, an image of like a little middle of nowhere uh, sort of tavern and coach stop. Um, and you feel the impression to meet him there, if you would like. Very much would. You are wood. <laughs> Hi, wood. I'm dad. Um, <laughs> not quite how it goes, but anyway. Um, so are you all going to scatter? Um, I guess you can scatter and then meet up at the yeah. tavern. Seeing as we have a destination, yeah. All right. Uh, with your With your abilities... So you all notice the the cultists are are stunned uh, by the aura coming off of him. As you all run away, he just stands there. And you see the heavenly demon in the distance, like a white fireball flying through the air, um, crashes back down in front of him and proceeds to just unload with every attack that he has. And you can't see the specifics of this exchange, but you catch the end. 
you see these massive sort of cosmos filled uh, animal silhouettes. They swell up out of him. And you can't tell what his physical body is doing, but you watch as this massive turtle flows. It's almost like like waves crashing over each other. The black massive silhouette of the tortoise is swallowed up in the phoenix, is swallowed up in the dragon, is swallowed up in the tiger, and there is an explosion. And you all manage to retreat. Can I just quickly say exactly how I retreat? Sure. <laughs> because I have my boots of speed. <laughs> yes. So I switch to tiger style, click my heels together, and run for the full 10 minutes that the magic lasts. <laughs> and by the end of those 10 minutes, I am seven miles away. <laughs> Nice. Activate supersonic speed. Uh, so, a little housekeeping. Um, amongst the treasures that you all found, uh, you have a lot of stuff to make items. You have the core of the, excuse me, the slumbering ancient one the elemental giant uh you have the core of the the crystal heart of the hydra lich you have rune inscribed uh crystal gem eyes uh you have um elemental cores from the brazers you have materials from the ancient ones clothing and relics you have crystallized jabberwock eyes uh, and all of this on top of just piles of, uh, we're just going to call it sort of undifferentiated stuff that you found um, in the sort of treasure room here. So some specific items. Um, Ty, you found a Vorpal dagger in the lair of the Jabberwocks. I don't know that you realized at the time uh, how powerful it is. I probably did it. Um, Lilifear, you found a strange uh, short sword mm -hmm. uh, mixed in among the treasures. And it radiated with falling stars energy. You found the Sword of Seven Stars. Cool. Uh, it's, I'll just read you this description here. Uh, this sharp, straight sword is made out of an impossibly black, polished length of meteoric iron. It has seven indentations along its blade. When cosmic energy is poured into it, the indentations glow, revealing constellations in blue-white light. That is a legendary weapon of your order, and I have dropped it into your inventory. Cool. Uh, Ty, you also found the Floodwater Cloak. Uh, which would take up the same slot as your Displacer, uh, or Displacement Cloak, but I'll let you look at it and decide. Um, Ty, you also found a technique book. Actually, it's not a technique. It's a, some kind of recording device for a technique called Break the Dam. Um... Show, you found a technique called the Wounded Star. Uh, 
Uh, and each of you found two grade five energy pills. Grade five. <laughs> yep. Uh, you can tell they're like in a beautiful, like gold inlaid, magically protected uh, like storage box in like little velvet recesses. Each one is brilliantly gold and literally glows. There's actually like, when you look at them, it actually looks like someone, it's hard to tell if they were carved or almost like they grew out of the pill. These sort of beautiful swirls filled with tiny spiritual formation formulas. Like they have grown naturally on the surface of these pills in the process of their creation. Um, the silence, you didn't get anything specific. So I'll say, what do you want? Um, and it's mostly just really know. I've already given you most of the cool stuff for your subclass. Yeah, um... Unlimited power. The Palpatine Cloak. <laughs> well, there's, there's a lot of stuff out there, but I won't really know. Because you've got all of your techniques. Uh, can you beef up the, the sound so it can attack people? We can do that. <laughs> That'd be funny. That'd be hilarious. I can, I can go with that one. Yeah. Uh, what you I'm find the sound constant commentary while fighting. Uh, what you find is actually a. It's like a treasure chest filled with crystals that look very similar to the sound, but don't have that same spark of life. And you can basically, when you open it, the sound, like, through your, your telepathic connection, you can feel it sort of drooling uh, at what could be in these. I'll have to find you a cool... Thing for it to be like Scooby Snacks. <laughs> well, what I was thinking of is what kind of stat block you would like it to be. Oh, right. Like ranged or melee or. Yeah. Things would be arranged. Can I? Hold on. You can go shooty pew pew. All right, so uh, you all have survived. You've made it out. Um, what are your priorities? What do you all want to do? One, figure out where that bar is at. Two, see if my school's still standing. So I'm trying to remember, where did you end up setting up your school? Was it literally in, in the Badlands? My oh. school? Oh, that's right. You set it up in the... Badlands. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, you're actually able to sort of telepathically connect. Um, they're, they're untouched. Nothing, no reprisal seems to have fallen on them. All right, all right. <clears throat> so I wonder if uh, Ty's Enterprise is still up and standing, or is it uh, been taken over? Mm -hmm. Ty, are you gonna go check on your <laughs> your rogue demon cult? I have to. I mean, I am the leader. Are you though, or is that gone? 
We are not going to talk about it, but uh, I I will still say I'm the leader. I'm going to pretend he's still the leader of his part of the demon. So, here's the decision I'll let you make. You don't know how the heavenly demon is going to respond to this. You find out right out of the gate that all of your branches are fine for now. But clearly the heavenly demon expected this interaction to go a certain way and he was thwarted. It is hard to say what he's going to do next. If you sort of overtly reappear you might make them a target. Mm. Mm. That would suck. Man, I need the, I kind of want the connections I've made as, you know, as me. You know what? I will. Uh, I'll watch from a distance. So observing, uh, they seem to be fine for now. Well, you know, I uh, kind of want to learn the break the dam uh, and, uh, scroll, anyways. And that takes a month, so I guess I could, you know, hold off for a month later. So. All right, so with that in mind, who have we not heard from? So, Sho, you wanted to go meet immediately, or you wanted to go meet. Lilifir, what, what's on your agenda? Uh, well, I'm flying away, first of all, as fast as I can go. <laughs> and I guess I might go back and also covertly check on my um my kids my lost boys or whatever make sure they're all intact um and then yeah make my way to this tavern that the dude showed us all right so i think what we'll do is have you all meet with him first and then sort of work your way out from there Sounds good. Um, so you all find this place and it's it's truly the middle of nowhere. <laughs> like it's a side road off of a major road that leads from one city to another and it's like way out there uh once you once you get out to that place it is pretty dead like you just see like occasionally like locals kind of come by like a farmer who lives nearby going to town swings through a wandering merchant uh seems to have sort of put down his pack and is eating there um Snicked, you are greeted by warm, uh, delicious, familiar smells as soon as you get there. It is, it is not specifically like your family, but it is the same style of esoteric cooking. Um, you see like a little like menu uh, thing that's been sort of written out uh, like on a like a piece of slate or something and hung up. And it's just what what would what would excite Snicked to see on the menu? Oh, literally everything. <laughs> so there's there's some Wait. normal things, but then there's like uh like braised 
uh, cricket dumplings and um, and lizard tail shawarma. Yeah, and uh, uh, you know, uh, golden slug stir fry over muck rice or something. <laughs> Just Fantastic. the wildest stuff. There's a few normal things too. Um, you all travel there with extreme speed, other than this very short uh, sort of sending of messages. Uh, and the guy is already there. <laughs> Uh, he looks uh, completely fine and is happily like there's just a table covered in bowls um, bowls and dishes and and at first you would think that he had gotten it f- for all of you uh, and had been sitting there waiting but actually as you watch he like clears out like four more bowls and um, uh, a like trio of goblin children run out to like clear the dirty dishes uh and a uh the most rotund dragonborn you've ever seen uh comes out with like two more huge trays with a ton more food and sets them down and the guy just keeps eating uh and with a mouth full of crickets and slug and jelly and whatnot he says, oh, uh, finally, take a seat. I'll have what he's having. <laughs> <laughs> um, so as you all gather around, his the, the force of him has sort of returned to normal. You all have kind of gotten used to being able to tell who is powerful and who isn't. And if you didn't know better, I mean, he doesn't register as any more, um, any more powerful than the goblin children. Hmm. But he's, uh, over 9,000. I mean, he he goes off the chart, basically. Like, his his power is so much larger than Ural's that you all don't even have a frame of reference for his power. (laughs) And he just says, uh, sort of -of matter-of-factly, so, uh, questions? starters who are you he sort of hesitates Uh, call me what Uh, I was saying something stupid (laughs) call me daddy zaddy Zaddy. nope we're, we're gonna we're going to avoid that. Uh, there's definitely a different name that he wants to tell you, but sort of hesitates. So he just says, uh, just call me, call me Lee. Okay. I assume there was probably like more detail you wanted to that. Well, like where he comes from. Where did you learn to do what you did? We were so hopelessly outclassed by that guy. And you came in and dealt with him like it was nothing. There are things that I can and can't explain now. 
the short version is I learned most of that here. And he just sort of gestures to like the world around you. What do you all think the day of 10,000 fists is for? Uh, to create the most strongest warriors possible to take on the heavenly demon king so that uh, our demon lord you got halfway on it I tried they I'm the best, best of the best some and you see him like start to use different words and he has to keep like rethinking them <laughs> some Thing wants strong fighters for something. He's like, yeah, I think I can say that. That's not terrifying at all. Do you remember the first day of 10,000 fists you went to? Yes. Uh, yes. You all were children, strong children, but children nonetheless. The things that scared you then, what do you think you would, how do you think you would think of them now? More, more or less trivial. The spider pig's still creepy, but you know. But delicious. <laughs> this is true. With the power you all have accumulated, you could probably kill hundreds of them without much effort. Thanks. Your, not just your power, but your understanding has grown. <laughs> Where do you think all of that ends? Never thought about it. I'm sure you've thought about becoming stronger, but what what happens after that? You make an advancement, you become more powerful. What? What's next? Next would be to take that power and to teach it to others. Get your friends, get your family, get close ones, teach them the powers. That uh, way, when they are advancing through their life, uh, they have a uh, one-up over everyone else, make them better. But what would you do if there's someone stronger than you? Hmm. Well, isn't that what the game of life is? Always someone stronger, always some other new monu uh, monument to achieve, always someone else is... You know, Oh, if someone else's rear end you're looking at that you want to be on top of. Isn't that what life is about? Stepping up ahead, right. pushing ahead further and further until Sweet. eventually you look up and all you see is the sky and not someone's rear end. Yeah. Some looking at it. What if I told you the sky isn't the end of it? Mm.
involved in something beyond the sky. Hopefully what you've started to notice is every time you climb the mountain, there's a higher mountain somewhere. Mm-hmm. You can see it from the top. So you climb the next mountain. And from there you see a higher mountain. And you climb and you climb. He seems to strain against something here. Maybe they can figure it out from that. The heavenly demon... isn't content with the sky. But he doesn't have And you see him just Almost like he's physically pushing against something There's something more than power And he doesn't have that He's trying to bundle up so much power that he can press on without the rest of it. But it doesn't work that way. But he's willing to burn it down, all of it, this whole world. To push through and pull himself up to the sky. There's some debate about whether he can actually pull it off or not. Personally, I'm not sure he can. But I think that he'll burn all of you down with him in the process. stop him I think you can I'm not allowed to intervene much more than I have even this is pushing it they don't like you to And he starts to say something and it's like something changes from a string to actual like pain. Um, Everybody give me a perception check just for fun. They are killing him. I had already leveled up, so just take three off of that. Okay. Uh, I think only show catches it. Uh, He manages to say, they don't like you too. And then he winces as he says the last two words. And only show hears it. And he says, they don't like you to come back. From being dead? Only show hears the last two words. say out loud then come back from what when you say that it like it's like a headache just like cripples him all at once all right 
I was wondering where the line was, and that was where the line was. I... I can't do much more than I have. But you all aren't as constrained. The heavenly demon has a plan. He didn't just burn down the tenure city to come and say hello. He thinks there's something something he can do with the gate. The next time it opens he's going to tear a hole in everything. So what you're saying is, is we have to stop him in in less time than the next tournament. There will be a moment where there will be a moment of vulnerability when he tries to manipulate the portal. You'll have a moment where he won't be, he won't be at a hundred percent. Do you think you all are up for it? Yeah, uh, let's lose throat. <laughs> what else are we going to do? <laughs> he says, I might be able to give you information to nudge you along. What what resources are you looking for? What do you need to take you to the next level? Probably a way to survive his aura. Yeah, not dying. That might help. Can you teach us ways to hurt him? That would be important too. I think I can teach you a few tricks. So I think we're going to go ahead and go into sort of montage mode at this point. Um, and we're going to cut back and forth of him training you all individually and you all sort of going out and taking care of business. Um, I was looking for a song to play for the montage. <laughs> Not that one, please. <laughs> 
Um, maybe the uh, <laughs> maybe the Axe Gang music from Kung Fu Hustle. Um, so we, we sort of see this sort of back and forth as he trains you all, uh, and I'll I'll give you a full rundown of the list. Um, all of you are going to pick up a flying speed. Uh, Woo! Of at least 30 feet. Um, Lilifear, your flying speed is going to double. Uh, all of you are going to bump up to... Uh, we'll, we'll jump you to 14 for now. And then before you you get sort of go after it um we'll put you up to 17 but that'll help you for skill checks and things <coughs> uh you can go ahead and learn any techniques you have floating uh if you want you can go ahead and use one of your uh grade five energy pills to upgrade your extra key So you could use one uh, and then keep the other. Or you can keep both. They're very powerful. Mm-hmm. Alright. So, we'll just try and do like one one, maybe two um, vignettes. So who knows a place they want to go or a thing they want to get? I uh, I know two things I want to get. What? Uh, the manual of quicken quickness of action and the tome of understanding. Now I did say no higher than rare. They, I thought they were rare. Or one, I might looked at the wrong website. Those are very rare. Oh, whoops. I'm that's, MS, man. that's right part of from. why I was like, now, what I'll say is, uh, if you wanted to make it a goal to go find one of those, that can be like your primary thing that you go after. Oh, we'll go after the, the Tome of Quickness. My primary thing I've done, I've hunted down. Um, let me pull a faction for you to go steal this from. So Lee sort of ponders on this for a minute. Oh, I know where you're going to steal this from. He says... Those sorts of manuals are exceedingly rare and for all intents and purposes, they are essentially one use. They take a hundred years to recharge. The only place I know of that has a collection of them is the Royal Library in High Crown. Are you willing to antagonize the Empire? Would it be antagonize or barter for it? Huh, what could you barter? I mean, I do have the power to disrupt a lot of stuff with my demon cults. <laughs> Less I could barter, really be a... more protection racket. Or blackmail. Well, first we'll try barter. Like, how much can I pay for this? And if they say it's not for sale, then I might have to kind of blackmail a bit more. So this is one of those items that is probably not uh, rated highly enough. 
uh, just because of how powerful it is and how it sort of functions in the game. Um, give me a history or arcana check. Oh, nice, a crit. Um, so these are closely guarded uh, by the Empire because being able to give that extra edge to their, their forces is a huge advantage that they have. And they have been accumulating them for a long time. Um, I mean, everything's for sale, but... Oh, these are not included in my uh, magic item price list. Huh. So what do you have to barter? Like what do you have any like items you're thinking of or Well, you know, I have a uh I have one grade five energy pill, so I'm gonna pop the other. I have my stupid arrow the arrow of time dagger, I have not much of other good items I kinda wanna give up. Oh, I have like what, three sets of uh uh, Demon Prince uh, cloaks. I can give. I think they would trade this. They might be willing to trade this for either. I think they would trade it for one of your legendary items. Either the Floodwater Cloak or the Vorpal Dagger. Mm. I don't know, that's a tough one. Oh, so good. I don't know if we do that. That's just giving up so much. I have to walk away from this idea. Right. Full adventure. 
yeah this is this is profoundly valuable like i've i've offered up a lot of value for them and i think that's the the trade-off is the empire has everything like they don't actually need to worry about gold for example not really uh except in dire circumstances you know items rare or under they're they're kind of in this you're creeping up on their weight class collectively like if they want an item that's rare or lower they can just have it made um True. you're right they are they are moved by things that are irreplaceable I got an idea. I'm going to walk away from this deal because I kind of don't want to give those up. But I'm going to remember this and I'm kind I maybe in the future I'll be a dick to him. <laughs> I'll say, you can always try and steal it. No, because I am not a stealthy monk. <laughs> All right. So we'll put a pin in that. We'll, we'll call this like um, you know, sort of the, the short montage uh, Lee tells you about the library. Uh, you go and meet up with like an imperial archivist, uh, someone who's kind of a, a scholarly bureaucrat. Um, and this one's a, this one's very much on the shady side. You've probably traded information with them before, um, maybe selling information on your your rival Black Flame princes um, in exchange for. Uh, resources and information from him um, and you, you, you all sort of bicker and barter back and forth and you're just not quite able to lock it down um, I think that he does give you an offer uh, there is a powerful um, bandit group that they have not been able to deal with. They've been terrorizing, um, uh, terrorizing the empire up and down one of their main river waterways. If you were to go and uh, kill or capture their leader. They might be willing to let you use and return one of the manuals. Deal. All right. So you are on the trail of the river dragon. Oh, sorry. That's not the correct name. Uh, the green dragon branch of river pirates and you are after the River King's Bastard. We'll come back to that in a minute. What else do folks want to do? Um, I would actually, since we know he's going to be coming back to the portal, I would actually like to gather up my school, anyone who's willing to come back. And instead of training for stuff coming out of the portal... I want to see if we can set up like favorable territory for defending it. So you're thinking of like trying to build fortifications basically. Yeah. And or traps. Are you trying to do this all on your own? Or are you going to try and get help outside your, your sect? I mean, yeah, I'd, I'd definitely mention it to my companions here, and uh, I probably wouldn't be quiet about it and ask anybody I came across if they wanted to help. Maybe send out some, since the Iron Body Clan has lots of forts all over, ask them for some help maybe. Yeah, uh, so give me a diplomacy check, or sorry, diplomacy. Give me a persuasion check with advantage. Uh, 
is it? What is going on here? I don't think any of this stuff matters. Twelve, yeah. All right, <laughs> with a twelve. Um... So with a 12, you get some help from the iron body. Um, they, uh, the iron body is very good at building forts. <laughs> uh, and I think once you sort of explain this, like with a 12, you don't necessarily persuade like the whole organization um, and your, even your master who is, are they the head of the sect or are they just one of the elders? Bartoon. Do you remember? Wait, that again, I'm sorry. Uh, your master was Bartoon, right? Yes. Um, I think we decided he is like a, a an elder and hero, but is not the head of the clan. You're trying to think of a name because I don't think we mentioned any other names. Right, but that's I'm just trying to remember if that's where we situated him. Does that sound correct? Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't think he's like the head honcho of everything. Um, so he's able to help. Um, he sets you up with a, a sort of subsidiary group that's called the Iron Spider Sect, who specialize in uh, sort of devious traps and machinations. Um, they're sort of like where all of the Iron Body nerds end up. Uh, they take their name from their technique. They fight with iron wire. Except they can manipulate it with spiritual energy uh, and use it like like a razor whip. Uh, they can set it as traps. They can sort of manipulate it in thin air. Uh, these nearly invisible strands of razor wire. Um, they come to help. Some of the iron body comes to help. Um... Are you really putting this out to like all of your possible folks? Yeah, yeah, I think I am. Um, I don't think I have any reason to be suspicious of anyone. Um, so yeah, I think I would would put it out to everyone. Uh, the Halpid family. It's sort of awkward, but they kind of owe you a favor. Um, you and Ty were part of breaking up one of their branch families that had started to behave in some pretty horrible ways. Um, and they don't, like, overtly help you. Uh, but you suddenly find that certain things that would be more difficult suddenly aren't. Uh, and finally, um, uh, Sub Abbot Own. Uh, some of the members of his organization come to help. And so over the course of years, uh, you all build a new, uh, instead of the 10 year city, uh, it's rebuilt as the uh, 100 year fortress. We're scaling up. 
Um, it becomes Love sort it. of a, a castle city. Um, explicitly built uh, with an eye towards keeping the the demon way at bay. Perfect. What else is on folks' agenda list? Well, I do have one loose thread that I probably need to deal with. Yeah. Is the series family still trying to kill me? So you're in kind of a weird boat because you have mostly outgrown the Saris family. <laughs> it's sometimes hard to keep track of this. When you were level three, there are tens, maybe hundreds of thousands of level three warriors in the empire. And then you were level, what did we jump to? Six? Yeah. There might be 10,000 level six warriors. But somewhere between level six and level 11, at level 11, the number of level 11 fighters is thousands in the whole empire divided between all the clans and families and sects and the empire for them to come after you is going to take mobilizing like their most powerful warrior and their only option is to come and basically kill you in a duel or uh, they can lean on their imperial connections to sort of gently but annoyingly complicate your life. But in terms of like actually coming and assassinating you, they're not that much of a threat anymore and you will fully outgrow them soon. But they could still be an issue if they wanted to. You're saying that the, I outgrew the thread without having to tie it off. <laughs> I mean, yeah, they're they're still they have other kinds of power. They have economic power, they have political power, but you outran violent retribution. Well then I don't have a loose thread to worry about. <laughs> Although I I do still kinda wanna handle that. Yeah. So, let me tell you my thought process. All right. Because you see, I I have this sword that lets me alter people's memories. All right. So what I want to do is go to the clan leader in the middle of the night while he's asleep. I'm going to rewrite his memory. I'm going to going to let him be a hero. I'm going to rewrite the memory so that I came to kill him in the middle of the night and he managed to kill me. <laughs> All right. I thought you were going to try and change the memory of the past and I was looking it up. I, I only go back 24 hours. So yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, we, we will roll a saving throw for him. Uh, what's does, is there a save DC on the weapon? I think it's supposed to be seventeen because it's, it's a wisdom save. Ah, yeah, yeah. All right, yeah. we're gonna say that he has a. He probably has a plus. Well, we'll leave this up to luck too. Uh, roll two d four. Two d four. Oh, that's not that bad, though. So his his bonus is a plus five. And what did you say the DC was? 17? 17. All right. Well, let's see what he gets. He got a nat one. <laughs> uh, this works perfectly. To the point where... 
there are lots of people who are like, hey, family head. Does it, does the story really make sense? <laughs> like, you had this big battle and there's no body and like everyone's trying to dodge around the fact that that you could kill this guy no problem <laughs> and he just like pushes through it he's just thrilled um there is a huge celebration because they have uh killed the cowardly assassin who murdered his son 20 30 years ago yeah <laughs> I'm trying to decide if I want to add that little bit of extra that I had in the back of my head. Before he disposes of my body, he sees a pin marking me as an Imperial assassin. He got a nat one. If you want to do it, go for it. <laughs> yep. All yep. Right. <laughs> he thinks that I was working for the Empire to try and kill him. So we see this play out over several years. Um... At first, there are all the celebrations, and then, almost overnight, the Ceres family goes strangely cold towards the Empire. Which is strange, because the Ceres family are, like, historically the closest allies of the Empire. They were the uh, sort of economic backing that helped the original Emperor unite the Twelve Regions. So, everyone is confused by this. And it keeps escalating. Uh, little by little, um, border disputes suddenly become more heated. Tariffs go up on roads. Uh, the taxes don't quite come in the way they're supposed to. And eventually, uh, <laughs> I would say like four years later, you hear of the execution of the Saris family head uh, and uh, all of his uh, direct family within one generation um, for trying to assassinate the emperor. Not directly, but a branch of the Saris family takes over and restores relations uh, and all the folks who were super uh, upset with you uh, thought you were dead and now they're dead. And that's how Snicks ties off loose ends. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, so uh, Lilifear, you want to do a check in on all your, your buddies? Yeah. Let me look at the list of all your buddies. I guess not all of them are at the Lost Boys camp anymore, but uh I was say you so Mal, uh the older uh half orc, half Goliath, uh is sort of running the group. Mm -hmm. Um sort of holding them together. Uh, at this point, they've all kind of aged up and are functioning more like a low-grade intelligence gathering group. Because mm -hmm. um, I mean, at this point, they're everyone's in their like thirties or forties. <laughs> um, uh, Strawn is Ty's disciple. I yes. think we said. So, how's that been going, Ty? Uh, I'm going to say it's been... You know, it's going really good. He's learning a lot. Uh, we are... We're, we're, uh, Ty's about to do some recruiting. And uh, <laughs> we're going to go take on um, some bandits. All right. Yeah, uh, Strawn is a, is a prodigy. Um were you teaching him the black flame techniques? Uh, I was kind of, you know, holding off on those and giving them more of a wave of water and 
Yeah, uh, no, way of the, kind way of the flowing of, river. Yeah, way of the flowing river. You know, kind of directions the path away from this. So I think with that in mind, over, um, over the years that you've been training him, uh, with your sort of gentle guidance and his own sort of genius insight, he's partially synthesized the time manipulation of the way of the flowing river with it's, it's still a fire, like a fiery elemental style, but he's slowly learned to separate out the sort of, uh, self-consuming aspect of it. Um, what would this new style be called? Something about fire and time. I don't know. We'll think on it. Um, so yeah, uh, he's doing exceptionally well. Uh, Nert, the tracker, is with Mal and sort of the main group. Um, uh, Snot has become uh, a sort of like mid-rank uh, nascent giant practitioner uh, and is, is growing in mastery of elemental energies. Um, he occasionally has been sort of sent out in the world uh, to gain some sort of real life experience and you've had a chance to sort of meet up and he's been doing well where did Athena and Luna go I feel like they were also with the demon cult but they were they never like, got any fire stuff because they couldn't handle it so they just used them as like slaves or whatever well i think it but, was that they they took on like a almost more like an administrative role with ty's group i'll double check that okay. uh, but they are also doing well good, good, good. your your group has been sort of plucked from the flames um so what else is on Lilifear's agenda? Hmm. Can't think of anything off the top of my head. I was curious, with the ring of water walking, does that mean I can never go underwater? <laughs> it's it's a choice. Okay. Because I was deciding, yeah, between the water walking or ring of swimming, they're kind of basic rings, but you never know. You might want to be able to swim faster. All right. And what is Harry, uh, what is the silence doing? It's being silent. You know, it's very simple. So with this giant threat, and since we were able to do nothing beforehand, we're going to start militarizing the, uh, the silence, or the... The sound? It's been, it's been a long week. The monks at my... Uh, oh, the, the academy, yes. At my academy was... and the academy I graduated from. We're gonna start militarizing, and um, we're probably gonna help show like also militarize around the portal. All right. You now uh, then, give me a uh, persuasion check with advantage. At first, I thought he said miniaturizing. I was trying to figure out. <laughs> All my rules have been crap all night. And they don't really uh, let up anyways. 
All right, with a 15, you do okay. I mean, you're the head of a, of a branch sect now. You're a an elder uh, in the Razor Mind sect, the, the main branch. Um, you're able to mobilize a lot of resources. Um, essentially, if you want to go that far, you can sort of turn uh, the... Uh, the hundred year uh, fortress uh, into like a sort of small sub branch of the Razor Mind. Um, if uh, with show's uh, permission, wait a minute. Show is not here right now. Oh, what happened to show? Well, he's in the Discord. Show. Yes. All right. So, do I have permission to help make like your hundred year fortress, like also like a part uh, academy for the razor mines, to help militarize it? Yeah, yeah. I would welcome any help, as long as you know you agree. Not necessarily the youngest children, but for the most part, a lot of people agree to help defend it when the attack comes. Well, let's that's our plan yeah I'm down for for everyone helping we're currently getting ready to militarize, militarize the razor mine uh, sector alright so with a 15 you're able to get a substantial amount of resources they definitely don't like empty out the whole sect um, but knowing that something big is happening they definitely are training harder. They're stockpiling supplies. Uh, some of the elders and sort of more promising younger students all go into isolated training uh, and just focus on growing their skills. Um, when the time comes, the Razor Mind will be able uh, to work alongside uh, these other clans in holding back the bulk of the, the Heavenly Demon's army. And um, what's your fortress? How many catapults do you have in ballistas? Is it outwards and inwards towards the um, portal? I guess we're gonna have to start building, like designing a layout for this fortress. Well, I'm thinking a star pattern ish, or maybe like an octagon with like little turrets. We'll have to see what I can make with Dungeon Alchemist. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Then, um... What's it called? What's this called? I forget. Oh, uh, I, I might build it as it. multiple maps that we can flip back and forth between. So we can have mm-hmm. like inside, outside, on top, different branches. Upside down. Yeah, that'd probably be about the best way to do it. Oh, are we going to like lay any like trenches around this with spike pole traps? <laughs> I'll let you all move this to the to a text message thread. <laughs> Let me take a while. And then in the meantime, um, the silence after getting like most of that taken care of is going to sharpen his skills. All right. So we will probably put a pin in it there. Um, if we can cover all of the sort of little logistical stuff, we could theoretically jump in ready to go for our final arc next week. Sounds good to me. Sounds good. All right. Uh, so think if there's any other uh, items. What I would say is just sort of rule rule of thumb. Uh, if there's a legendary, one legendary equivalent item that you all want to sort of go after uh, or create, let me know. And we'll sort of play with it. And uh, yeah, we'll be back next week, potentially to start wrapping the whole thing up. 
all about. Sounds good. And with that, I am going to take us mm. offline. <coughs> Bye, Internet. Mm.